Again, it's going to be a bit of a learning experience when you first start, but just to go over what we went over last time, you're going to open up the DF remote executable that you got from the um, creator's website, the mifki.com website, and you're going to open up Dwarf Fortress. And in just a second, you're going to have the two windows open up that we had last time. Again, um, this one right here is the Dwarf Fortress window, and this one right here is the DF Hack window. You're going to need to wait for this starting uh, video to finish. There's actually a way to turn it off, but um, I won't, I'm not going to go over it at this time. Anyway, once this finishes, um, I think you might be able to press escape too. Yeah, to finish it early. But anyway, what we're going to do in the DF hack window is type in. So last time we typed remote connect. This time we're going to type remote start. Since you've already added the connection and you know I already have it right here in the window. So I'm going to go ahead and type in remote start. Um, that's going to enable the ability to connect remotely. And again, I will just go ahead and tap on that on my iPad and it immediately shows up here. Um, at this point, it's not really important to have the DF hack window open. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch to a different screen. Um, that just shows the uh, the main windows I think that are going to be useful for. Alright, this is the first screen you will see once you've tapped on your um, server once Dwarf Fortress is running. Um, if you've never created any worlds, you'll just see this option to create a new world. Um, on the subscription service, I believe we saw that there was a world already pre-generated, although you did have the option to create a new world. Um, you can create as many as you want. Um, typically, you'll have only one fortress going per per world, although the worlds are incredibly just immense with a lot going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can have as many worlds as you want. So I'm going to go create a new world. So this screen's um, something I've, I wanted to talk about. It's not bad. I mean, initially, the, the setup is, is just fine. There's a few things you need to, to know about. The world generation is quite slow, especially um, with respect to this world size and history up on the top. For world size, it's really going to depend on the capability of your computer. I have a fairly strong computer, so the, the generation is pretty good, but it's a very CPU-based generation, meaning that if you don't have a very strong CPU on your computer, I would definitely recommend keeping this small and possibly changing the history size to very short, which is five years. Um, I'm for, I guess, just so I can show a good tutorial, I'm going to do a medium size world with 125 years just to make sure that we can get a good spot and we're not going to accidentally end up somewhere where we could possibly get in trouble. One other thing that I kind of wanted to point out here is that this um, window right here, the Dwarf Fortress window, um, I mean if you actually have your computer up and running and you're watching it while you're working on your iPhone or your iPad, you'll see that all the commands we're doing are going to be sent directly here as if you were entering them right on your computer. That's basically what the remote part does. So I'm going to go ahead and press start now and keep an eye on on this window as we're as we're going. So the iPad just shows loading data, please wait, but there's a lot of stuff going on down here. Um, you'll you'll see the the world generation going on um, here. It's it's basically just building the entire world as far as the structure goes, and then it's going to start building the generating the history. This game has an incredible amount of depth as far as a simulation goes. Um, <clears throat> civilizations get built, civilizations get destroyed. People go to war, people make friends. It's a whole huge story. There's actually a, a really interesting mod where you can see all of the history that's actually occurred. Um, again, I'm probably not gonna get into that in this tutorial, but maybe if I do a more advanced world generation tutorial for the Dwarf Fortress remote stuff, um, I can talk about that later. Um, eventually, once it does get to year 125, we will be able to start picking some options. 
But something also worth noting while it's generating here is that we have kind of the bare bones ability to, to generate a world and start out. Um, one of the recommendations, even from the actual developer, is if you really want a custom world start, is to generate the world on your computer, and then once you've you know embarked and, and left the the world creation area, you can do everything at that point on your iPad. So for now, I'm I'm just going to keep it simple and stick directly to the application. Um, again, this world generation process is a bit slow, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here, and I'll pick back up when it's done. All right, so the world finished generating, um, so we will hit the accept button here. This is going to take a few seconds. Again, that took a little bit more than a minute, but we'll go ahead and start here. So. Teu Vutheni is the world that we just generated. We're going to go ahead and tap on that. This is fairly quick, but what this is going to do is load up the world and allow us to find a kind of a region that we want to live in. Um, if you're looking on this window still, what it does is it generates about 14 days worth of history to kind of push it forward and just make sure that anything that was sort of stuck gets moving kind of in motion um, so yeah right here is sort of the first screen you would normally see if you were using the desktop application but again the iPads just super nice um, these names are automatically generated for your civilization um, the goal of streams I guess is our, our new civilizations name I'm going to tap find desired location though um, so this embark size just determines the size of your map. Again, if you have a fairly small computer, or your, you know it's, it's not too strong, um, your embark size of three by three is just fine. So I'll I'll leave it there just so you can kind of see how big of an area that is. Um, most of these settings you're gonna want to change, especially if it's your first round. Um, savagery and evil make the game a little bit harder. So I'm gonna set both of those to low. Um, elevation, temperature, rain, and drainage, um, they're, they're going to affect the game, but um, not, not so much that I think it's going to be too hard to, to do anything. Um, one of the things that you do want to kind of keep an eye on um, are the flux stone layer, the aquifer, river, shallow metal, deep metal, and to a lesser degree, soil and clay. Um, aquifer is the really big one. Aquifers make it very difficult to build a um, to build a new civilization. So I'm going to go ahead and hit no on that. For the flux stone layer, I'm just going to hit yes. Um, again, I'm setting this up to be probably one of the easiest setups you can have for when you're first starting. So I'd highly recommend following this. Rivers are nice, but it's hard to find everything, especially because aquifers and rivers tend to go together. Um, so I'm going to leave it to any. Um, shallow metal and deep metals, I'm going to hit multiple. Soil, it's, it's nice if you have some soil. Um, it lets you, you grow um, more than half the plants in the game. The, the core plants you can grow underground for the dwarves, but um, as your fortress kind of expands as you grow and kind of want to do stuff, um, being able to farm stuff outside is, is nice. So I'm going to put a little bit of soil there, and then I'll just do any clay. And then I'm going to tap on the top right corner for find. Now, again, switching back to the um, Dwarf Fortress window up here, what it's going to do is search through um, every, I'm not quite sure what the division is called, sector, I guess, of the map. There are 81 sections of the map that it's, going, that it's searching through to try to find locations that match the criteria that we gave it. Um, if you were too picky, it's still good about giving you locations that have maybe one or two things that are missing but they tend to be one or two things that are pretty significant uh, so maybe you might end up with everything you wanted but a really evil or um, very difficult area um, so yeah I'll just try not to be too picky I guess is the punchline there alright so what we did is we found found an area um, 
again, I think I added too many criteria even now because the first place it gave me was something that had, uh, I guess, actually it doesn't seem bad. I mean, it has clay, deep soil, shallow metals, deep metals, flux, stone layer. Um, surroundings are mirthful, which is good. So these colorings are kind of intuitive. Um, if they're green, that's good. Um, for temperature, blue is cold. You want something kind of temperate. Um, although, and so this wouldn't be a bad place to start, but we can go ahead and search through. One other thing worth looking at is that each one of these sections may have multiple biomes in it. So while this first one may be good, you know, but you can tap on the second one. Um, this is actually a bad indication. This means that your this particular spot is probably on the edge of an icy area right next to kind of a ice sheet or something. <laughs> So yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely not going to take this place. So yeah, I'll hit next match um, several times. One very, very important thing to, to, especially for your first starts, are the heavily forested. Um, you definitely want trees. Other vegetation is very nice. Um, surroundings can just be kind of an indicator. Of may, you, you may have kind of mean beasties wandering out there. Um, this isn't bad, but again, because we were on a medium-sized map, I'm sure there are multiple places we can go. So I'm just going to keep hitting next match until I find something good, and I'll explain why I thought it was good. Um, yeah, none of these are... There we go. This one looks good. All right, so the temperature is temperate. Uh, it's got, it's a woodland area, so it's going to have a fair amount of trees, which are important, especially to make an easier start. Um, other vegetation, there's a moderate amount, calm surroundings, um, no aquifer, which is very nice. Um, it's got soil, um, shallow metals, deep metals, and a flex stone layer with some clay. So this, yeah, seems like a great place to, to start off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on use this location. Um, here is uh, one of the, the recommendations that I was mentioning earlier. Um, you can't edit profiles or manually configure dwarves and items at the moment. For better control, consider starting the game in Dwarf Fortress on your desktop. Um, that's, yeah, I mean, a little bit more advanced, but not definitely not necessary. Um, it can help you out if you really wanted to do some fun or tricky things when you're starting out. Um, for now, I'm just going to tap the Play Now, um, and again, pay attention to the um, Dwarf Fortress window. So when I tap Play Now, um, you're going to, it's going to load this up um, and kind of give you a, a little bit of a description. Again, it says just, you have arrived, and after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond, your heart's trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Atesh Meben. Meben. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you. But it is spring now, enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the dingoes get hungry. A uh, new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Asselcad? Uh, saber clean. Strike the earth. So, strike the earth is one of these, uh, I guess, phrases that, that really became popular with this game. So if you ever hear that phrase, especially in a lot of these kind of uh, survival games, maybe RimWorld or anything like that, um, so if anyone mentions strike the earth, it's just a... Uh, Playback to uh, Dwarf Fortress. So I'm going to tap on Strike the Earth. And I think for here, this is kind of where we're going to end. Um, this is going to be a little overwhelming at first. There's a heck of a lot of colors. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time to sort of train your, your head and to sort of understand what's going on here. Um, again, you can just take your finger and kind of move around the map. Um, all the controls are pretty intuitive. You pinch to zoom in, pinch to zoom out. Um, I will go over everything here on the next video, but for now, um, I just want to leave this here. This is going to be the end of world generation. In the next video, um, I will begin to talk about the steps you're going to take when you start your very first day in Dwarf Fortress.